Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we're going to be trying to use the newly fixed Absorbing Man. So Absorbing Man previously, he wouldn't trigger the correct number of times when used with a Wong, used in Kamar Taj, or with Odin in those lanes. And now that has been fixed, so it's almost like he got a miniature buff. And now he works correctly, so when thinking about what decks he works well in with Wong, with Odin, I have a couple. But this was one of the decks that I ran in, in a previous season, and I think with the addition of, of Absorbing Man, I think it makes it pretty decent again. So before it was really broken whenever Silver Surfer was broken, but since they have adjusted and balanced Zabu and Silver Surfer, it kind of brought that power potential down quite a bit. But it still has some incredibly consistent amounts of power that it pushes. It has a pretty high power ceiling, and with Absorbing Man, you can potentially use that in the Wong lane. They could get inverted you could have some really cheap wong absorbing man mystique silver surfer ironheart or wolfsbane combos to just push uh, an absurd amount of power for a relatively cheap energy cost and so a lot of times this deck can win bigger cube games just with mr negative in general a lot of times you can kind of hide or feign how strong your hand is until that last turn when you really just blitz out all of your power i think with the zabu and being able to potentially curve out your mr negative on three with the buff to Absorbing Man, you can potentially find a lot more flexibility and a lot more ways to win using this deck. And so the biggest thing with this deck is that it's not reliant on any one particular piece. You don't have to have your Silver Surfer every game. You don't have to have your Zabu, your Mr. Negative, your Absorbing Man every single game to find a way to win. It is meant to be incredibly flexible in how and where you position your power. Now with the Sandman change to 5-5, a lot more people are running him, and that is most of the time, if they ramp into it, going to tank this deck. And so we're going to be utilizing this deck for a couple of games. Overall, my experience with this deck has been incredibly positive, very consistent. So if you want to see more of the deck, definitely check out my Twitch channel. I'm probably live running this or another Absorbing Man deck right now. So follow the link in the description below or go to twitch.tv slash TLSG to see a little bit more. All right, first up we have NTFOB. The first location is the vault. So we're going to have to play there a little bit early. Um, and their Iceman hit our perfect Zabu into Mr. Negative Curve, unfortunately. So because of that, I may just play Brood into the vault instead of playing Zabu this game. The biggest advantage from Zabu is that it allows us to curve out Mr. Negative on three. And then we, of course, get the reduction in any of our four cost cards after that. Wow, what are the chances of that? All right, next up we have Satirical. We're going to try this and try to do a little bit be <laughs> a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and skip on turn one. We do have Bast, but unless we draw Zabu, then we're, we don't have a turn two drop that we would rather play. And so I'd rather hit one more potential target. So the Ironheart is going to get more value now. We're going to go ahead and play Bast into the sewer system. It's not great with the with it negating the power level that he has, but it's better than playing it into the unknown in some scenarios. <clears throat> and we definitely don't want to play into the Lechugia unless they change it with Reality Stone. So Elysium actually makes their stones free, but it makes our costs, our cards cost a lot less as well. So we can set up like a Wong into maybe a Mystique, a White Tire. We're throwing cards in that we don't actually own. We can set up a Wong. <laughs> we can set up a Wong into maybe a Mystique. We can do the quadruple trigger of Ironheart, Silver Surfer. Maybe we do a quadruple trigger of Silver Surfer and Absorbing Man. If we draw into both of them, uh, Elysium, I think, helps us quite a bit here. They do play armor into the middle location, so it looks like they're running the maybe the flood version. So like the ongoing deck, the the Khazar Zoo style deck, maybe a Spectrum ongoing buff deck. And they snapped after we played Wong, so I'm curious what they are running. I'm hoping they're they're Wong for snapping. I think I'm gonna play Iron Man into Elysium. Next turn we can do Hawk and Brood into the Avengers compound. And then we can set up our last turn play for like a Wolfsbane and Ironheart. Get some additional value. They leech us. That's why they snapped. The leech on four is so frustratingly good. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see if there's anything we do we can do. Luckily, we didn't have Silver Surfer in our hand, so we get some benefit there. Um, 
I guess we copy the Iron Man to this right lane. We have a shot. If we can draw into Silver Surfer, maybe we can spread out our power enough. We could do Brood, Wolfsbane, and then Silver Surfer to double trigger here. We might be able to still make it work. Um, Leech is incredibly frustrating, but it's not necessarily just like, I don't know, un un unbeatable. It's just always, it always disrupts your game plan drastically, and so it's a little bit frustrating when it does happen. They play the Black Bolt into the Avengers Compound. We do draw our Silver Surfer, but they made us discard our Wolfsbane, so we only have one more three-cost card. So where do we want to play it? When we play Silver Surfer, it's going to trigger two times. So it's going to be eight extra power in this lane, so it's going to double to 16 extra power. So it's going to bump us up to 18. Can they beat us with 18? I don't know. Maybe we... Maybe we play Brood into middle and we just kind of split the differences. Because the Brood here would help us win this lane if they don't play anything. I don't know. It all comes down to what they end up playing. I, I assume that they have a stature that comes down. That's why they're running the Black Bolt. Is that they're testing out a stature in this deck, but where do they end up playing it? I feel like we need more power in the left lane. We're going to go all in on left. I feel like they don't push much into the Avengers compound because that's already a pretty big lane. I feel like they maybe push into e into Elysium and the sewer system. It could be a bad read. <gasps> okay, wait. No, that's not what we need. <clears throat> um, we might still be able to do it because that brings our Mystique over. That's going to get the buff from Silver Surfer. They play Stature into middle. We have the Brood coming down the Silver Surfer that's only going to trigger once, and that is going to give us just the slightest lead. We overcome the Magneto, we overcome the Leech, we overcome the pretty unique Thanos deck for the four cubes. That one feels good. We are going to go ahead and take that one. That one was very, very nerve wracking, but in the end, it did end up playing out. We are going to go ahead and take the four cubes. Let's jump over into the next one. So we actually just lost to Tyler. They are running a, an Electro Ramp Sandman deck. And so we had Zabu, we had the Mr. Negative on three, and they had Electro in the Sandman on four. Completely just derailed everything that we wanted to be able to do. And so uh, we have to we have to be aware uh, of that playline. Now we get a little bit of an advantage in this one because of Bar Sinister, I think. We do have the Silver Surfer that can be used four times here. If we don't have a better setup of like Wong into... Uh, into maybe a Mystique, into just the Silver Surfer triggering an absurd number of times. Now, they do snap on us again. Um, I, I think we're okay. We're going to play Brood into middle. They probably play Electro here, or maybe a wave to get their to get their Sandman out early. Ooh, no, they play into Bar Sinister. Oh, the Sunspot. Okay. Uh, the Sunspot can give them some pretty good value, but, but I don't know. I don't know that that's the right call. They, it's a lot of power in that lane, but it's that lane alone. First to fill up the Sacred Timeline, we could get two Silver Surfers now. Might be kind of cool. <laughs> um, We could do our Silver Surfer if we wanted to. I don't think we do, though. We also have Mystique to play. Let's go ahead and do... Let's go ahead and do Bast. We're going to play Bast into the middle. That's going to set our Mr. Negative to three. That way, when we use them next turn, it's not negatively impacting that lane. They are skipping to let their Sunspot absorb energy here. So they didn't have the ramp component, which is great. Uh, maybe we can get some revenge on Tyler. We have the Iron Man, which would have been beautiful to be hit with Bast, but um, I think that's okay. We can do our Mr. Negative. We have Hawk still. That might be decent. Or do we just do... Or do we just do Wong into... Iron Man, Mystique, Silver Surfer. Because Mystique copying Iron Man here four times, there's nothing they can do to beat that. We'll see what the best way is. I think Wong is going to be our answer. Um, we're going to do that instead of Mr. Negative this game. Just in case they pull a Sandman, I want to kind of help roof ourselves against that. So the, so the Magneto doesn't have anything to pull. Thankfully, it is stuck there. Uh, we do get our Hawk. So I think we still go with the... Iron Man here. It's either that or we go with Mystique. But it comes down to do we think they have Sandman in their hand or not? And I don't know. I don't know if they do or not. I'm going to hope that they don't. We're going to play Iron Man into the right. Uh, okay, so the wave. Eh, that's not great, actually. 
but we can still only play one card. We could do the Mystique, which would copy the Iron Man over in the right lane. We could do the Silver Surfer that's going to trigger four times, um, but it doesn't hit anything in this right lane, uh, which is going to be our biggest issue. So this would be 3-6. It's not enough to win this lane. We don't have a three cost card in the right lane, which is where our biggest issue is going to come from. We can double trigger the Silver Surfer. That's going to be a decent value here. It's going to be 12 extra power in the middle lane, bringing it up to 19. It depends on what their read is. If they go with a Doctor Doom, uh, that's unfortunate. They don't, they don't win. Um, we're going to gamble here. We're going to assume that they support more power into Tinker's Workshop to avoid the Silver Surfer play. Mystique is going to copy Iron Man. It's going to be better than their 32. <laughs> uh not great but we're gonna let it we're gonna let it play through they do play into mid they play odin into mid that could be huge if it pulls dr doom we still lose this but otherwise the electro we can beat that we can beat the electro here um the mystique to copy the iron man this is this is it <laughs> we we got our revenge against tyler they do have sandman somewhere in their deck but we win this based on a gut call of where they were going to play their power That left lane was close. <laughs> that left lane was close. Uh, not a not a comfortable game by any means, but we were able to pull it out. We are gonna go ahead and take the four cubes. Let's jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Draco Chaos. And <laughs> the last time we went up against them, they were running a Thanos Galactus deck. Just off the wall craziness. Uh, I don't even know how efficient or good it is. We pull into our Mystique. Oh my gosh, we're having the worst luck this morning. Um, they pull into their Thanos. We pull into our Mystique, which is just awful. Uh, that's just never what you want to see. It's unfortunate. They play Soulstone into Mojo World. We are going to push to cap out that location with like a Brood. Uh, we're not giving up hope just. We have our Wong we can use on four. Maybe we end up going with an Iron Man into mid on five. We have the Iron Heart and Wolfsbane we can use into the Wong lane. To be able to push a little bit of extra power, I don't know. That's just unfortunate. Now, knowing that they're running a Galactus, I don't think they play into Hala here. I think our opening is to play Wong over into Hala, but it could be a bad read and we could end up losing our Wong. <laughs> so they do play two cards into mid. They play the Mind Stone, they play Psylocke to ramp up into their Galactus and a Cloak. So they could move cards into Mojo World. They can play their Galactus here, but we're okay with that, right? We're going to play Iron Man. And then on the last turn, if they do Galactus here this turn, then our, our we can do Wolfbane and Ironheart. It, our, our Ironheart will only have one target to hit. Um, and so we're okay. No, the She-Hulk comes down. Oh, that's awful. You baited us, man. Um, I was expecting the Galactus with the ramp, and that is not what ended up happening. So an arrow would really tank us here. We do this we need at least i guess i guess we don't even have to do this we can just do we can just do wolfsbane and then silver surfer silver surfer will trigger twice that's going to give us 16 extra power in mojo world which should be fine and then this will let us win the right lane now if they do have an an arrow then that definitely hurts us the reality stone that's fine the space stone that's fine uh we will be able to secure the victory of this craziness uh, it's always a pleasure, Draco Chaos, whenever we run up against you, knowing that it's just such a unique Galactus Thanos build that nobody else is running that I've ran into. So it's always a little bit refreshing, but it also made a name for yourself so we can identify it as soon as we see you. So we are going to take our two cubes. All right, next up we have Mathologist Brad. And <laughs> if you watched the last video, you know that we have a small beef with Brad. They beat us two times when we were running a Moon Knight and a Black Bolt in the Stature deck. We discarded their Swarm both times. And so I think they deserve an early snap. We do have our Zabu into Mr. Negative Curve. So if they're running the same deck, they could very easily have switched by now. Um, we do have the Zabu into Mr. Negative, which is great for our inverted cards. We have some really good targets left in our deck in our Ironheart, Mystique, Iron Man, Hawk, Wong, all phenomenal to be inverted. Getting it out that one extra turn early is insane as well. We're going to go ahead and play Mr. Negative into Stark Tower. Um, we want to split up the cards that are not three cost. That way we can stack some cards that could be benefited from the Silver Surfer wherever possible. So they play an Angela, so they may not be running their discard deck anymore. Um, maybe it was just enough to, to taunt and tease us and then they, and then they abandoned it. 
Since we have a Silver Surfer already, I'm going to go ahead and cap out the Stark Tower lane. I'm a little bit less concerned there than I would be otherwise. We have the Silver Surfer that can trigger once. We have the Iron Heart to help buff it up potentially. Um, and so if we end up getting a Wong, we can double trigger the Silver Surfer, push quite a bit of extra power into Stark Tower. Um, otherwise, we would definitely be on the fence about capping it out this early. Um, but I think since we can push power there several different ways moving forward, I think we should be fine. Uh, we do play the Bast. Ooh, we get our Absorbing Man, which is beautiful. All of the cards left in our deck, though, are um, zero cost, zero cost, zero cost, now that they've been inverted, or at most two cost with the Wong. Three, four, five. Uh, if we get Wong, we could do Wong and Silver Surfer, or, or Silver Surfer and Absorbing Man, but not both. Or we could do something kind of kind of cheeky. We could do Ironheart into Absorbing Man into Wolfsbane. We can push a lot of power to the left, a lot of power across the board, and then we have our Silver Surfer, so if we draw our Wong, then we can do Wong and Silver Surfer, uh, and we have the three cost cards in the left and middle to buff up as well. And so they are running a Khazar Zoo Flood deck. Uh, we know that we're not going to discard their Swarm anymore. They probably have, I would assume they maybe have a Dracula somewhere in their deck if they're wanting to get their Infinite or cheat their Infinite out onto the board rather early. Um, and so we're going to see if maybe we can combat that. Now, holding the Iron Heart for a potential Wong may have been a better play. Uh, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll see depending on, yeah, with the Wong coming in. Oh, with the Zabu, it becomes one cost. So we could have done, oh, man, we could have done Wong, Silver Surfer, and Absorbing Man. I forgot about the reduction from Zabu. Oh, unfortunate. We are going to get the double trigger of the Silver Surfer, which is decent. We buff this lane up quite a bit, this lane up a decent amount, but they can move their Nightcrawler, so they could potentially outpower us here. This right lane is not going to get much value at all. Ooh, so they, okay, so they move, they play their Bishop in the right lane. I think we're beaten there. As the Silver Surfer comes down, it buffs up their Angela a bit, but I think we still outpower it with, with oh, wait, what am, what are, why are we stressing about it? We have so much power that we're going to push in the brood from the double trigger of silver surfer here a lot of it was kind of helped along with the absorbing man we could have done a, an insane last turn with the iron heart uh with the absorbing man with the wong the silver surfer ah but we will take the four cubes anyways that one feels good we came back over the brad himself that beat us down in the last video all right next up we have nine the first location is the baxter building so we're going to be able to so if we can win that one, we get extra power across the board. We do have Bast into Zabu into Mr. Negative, but we don't know what, I mean, we do know what, we do know what nine is running. And I actually think we're okay with this. We'll go ahead and do it. Um, we have the biggest targets for our Mr. Negative in our Iron Man and our Mystique already in our hand, which is not fantastic. Um, but with the, having the Bast, the Zabu, the Mr. Negative, we get value out of all of those cards. And so we can kind of spread our power across the board. We have the inverted cards that will come in. So maybe we get an inverted uh, Absorber Man and Silver Surfer and Wong, and we can make use of it that way. Uh, the Raft could be interesting. We can do Mr. Negative this turn. Next turn, we can do Brood to finish capping it out. So it depends on if they decide to flood it or not. If they decide to flood it, we might not be able to keep pace. Uh, but otherwise, we might be able to get the free Raft resource. We can buff that lane up further later on in the game. So they play their Mind Stone and their Soul Stone in Baxter Building. So cards like Iron Man are, are going to be less impactful because it's going to double up on that negative effect from the Soul Stone. So they do play a couple of cards into the Raft, unfortunately. Okay, so they change the Raft into the Hub, and it gives us <laughs> Rocket Raccoon. Not, <laughs> not something we necessarily needed. Um, okay, so we do get Wong here. Ooh, and Wong becomes a one-cost card, which is great. Is it ever Wong to do this? Um, they could do Leech here. They could do Leech here, so I think we want to get our Wong out of our hand. Same thing with Brood. We don't have Silver Surfer. We don't have Absorbing Man or Ironheart, Hawk. So we have some really good resources and extra power left in our deck. So if they do Leech because of the Time Stone here, I think we're okay. It does hurt because the <laughs> these two cards are massive behemoths. Uh, but it... Okay. Okay, so the Devil Dino comes down. Um, we can deal with a Devil Dino, I think. We have the Wong. This might be our loss lane, but the Wong will let us just do some absurd triggers. We can either copy Wong. We could 
play our Iron Man into this lane potentially, but that is double Im doubly impacted by the Soul Stone. We're going to play our Mystique to copy Wong. We're going to hope that we top deck into maybe Silver Surfer. We could do Silver Surfer and the last card here. Um, hoping that Iron Man pulls in that... Oh, that's rough. That is rough. We get a, <laughs> we get a really big ra Rocket Raccoon, but that's not what we wanted. We don't want the Rocket Raccoon. It's going to trigger, what, four times? What is this absurdity? Oh, no. Okay, well. <laughs> that's, the biggest, <laughs> that's the biggest Rocket Raccoon I've ever seen. Oh, and we get the unfortunate... Oh, Killmonger comes down. So it does clear up space in the left lane. Uh, <laughs> Absorber Man copies the Rocket Raccoon, unfortunately. And we get the Wolfsbane. Um, not the worst thing. We could play Iron Man into middle. Uh, Wolfsbane is going to trigger four times, so it, I don't know. I don't know. We we could we could very easily lose this one, but we're going to see it play out just because of uh, what are these? Like they got the Killmonger from the hub. <laughs> they had a they had a one out of six chance of pulling into it, and they did to clear up us cl to clear us up this space in this lane. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can ooh, do it some justice. They play one card into Grand Central, uh, but nothing into the right lane. Do they just play their uh, their Thanos because he's bigger and more buffed now? They do just play their Thanos, and so we're able to swing the left in the far right lane. What is this game? Um, I mean, I will gladly take it. <laughs> Oh, those four cubes feel like they were not earned, but given. <laughs>